In this video, we're going to make the cover of the book known as the case. We're going to start by getting two pieces of grey board larger than the book, and we're going to cut those to size. The size of the book is the height of the book plus two times the square, and the width from the shoulder to the foredge plus uh, one square. Now the square is the overlap, the part that hangs over the edge of the book. Mark the boards that are front and back and start by straightening one edge. It's going to be the reference edge that we're going to work away from. So you make one edge straight and mark that. And then you make a corner square and mark the square corner. And we're going to work out from that square corner. Put the text block on the on the board and adjust the square to three millimeters on the end that we'd squared up, and then mark the three millimeters square at the foredge and the other end of the book. In this case, it's the head. Why three millimeters? Well, three millimeters uh, looks right for a a book this size if the book uh, and this is an A5 size book so if it was an A4 size book maybe you would go to four millimeters but uh, I probably still uh, use three uh, some people like to make the four edge square slightly larger so they might use three for the head and the tail and four for the four edge but uh, we, I'm going to use three all around some people will make the tail slightly uh, smaller, maybe two millimeters, um, because they're worried about the text block dropping in the um, binding. But uh, because we've done such a good job of rounding and backing this book, the text block, uh, I'm confident the text block won't uh, sag in this book. Once we've cut the two boards to size, we're going to mark out where the cloth is going to go on the cover. Now the style of binding we're going to do is a half binding, which has a strip of cloth on the spine and uh, in the corner. So again, here's an example of what we're trying to achieve. So we're going to mark that out on the covers. Now, the width of that spine piece is usually a quarter to a fifth of the width of the book. So we're going to use a quarter, so I'm going to measure from the outside of the spine to the foredge, and then divide that by four. Now the paper is going to overlap the cloth by three millimeters, so once I divide it by four, then I'm going to add three millimeters for that overlap. And because I'm no good at measuring half millimetres, I'm going to round it down. I don't think anyone's going to notice a 2% uh, change. So I'll measure from the outside of the spine onto the board 41 millimetres. But then I'm going to use a pair of dividers to transfer that uh, to the head and the tail of this board and to the, um, to the other board as well. 
That way I'll get it nice and uh, even uh, on both of the boards. So the corner measurement is uh, 41 millimeters as well, diagonally in. So I'll get 41 millimeters on my dividers. And then I'll draw diagonal lines in from the corners and then measure the 41 millimeters in and then another diagonal line where the cloth is going to go. If you compare that to a finished book, I hope it makes sense. And mark out the second board exactly the same way. Here's an example of the case that we're going to make. There's three things that we need to determine measurements for. The width of the cloth piece, that's the X, the distance between the boards, the Y, and the width of the spine stiffener, Z. We determine those measurements by measuring them directly off the book. So we put the boards in place, push them into the shoulders, then we get a scrap piece of paper and wrap them around, wrap it around the book and mark where the edge of the cloth is, where the edge of the board is and where the shoulder is. And we do that on both sides. Now we can measure X, Y, and Z directly off this piece of paper. For the width of the cloth and the distance between the boards, we're going to add two millimetres because when we wrapped the piece of paper around the spine, we didn't have the manila spine stiffener in place. We add the extra two millimetres for the extra distance that we need to go around the spine stiffener. Start by cutting the spine cloth, so we'll straighten up an edge so we can measure from that. We'll measure the uh, width of the piece of cloth.
The spine stiffener is made of manila card. So we'll just uh, straighten up an edge and then um, cut that to the correct width. And we'll also cut that to the same height as the boards. Finally, we're going to make a little jig. This is going to help us position the boards on the cloth. We're going to cut this to the distance between the boards. Now, a small inaccuracy will um, be multiplied by the angle of the board, so you do need to get this quite accurate. Before we start gluing things, I'll cut the uh, corner pieces of cloth. Now these corner triangles can be larger uh, than they need to be, or it's better if they're larger, and then we'll trim, trim up the turn ends later. So make a little template and mark out the corner pieces and then cut them out. This little template is just made out of a bit of uh, cardboard, uh, you could use grey board and the, it's a right angle triangle and the two adjacent sides are 10 centimeters long. It's easy enough to make a template for yourself. For adhesive, I'm going to use uh, a mix of 50% uh, starch paste and 50% PVA. So I'm just going to uh, force some uh, paste through a strainer. I always do this three or four times before I use it. I'm going to mix uh, some of it with PVA, just 50-50 mix. The only step I'll use straight paste for is for casing in, when I uh, attach the text block to the inside of the case. I'll start by gluing the corner pieces in place.
Now I'll glue the uh, spine cloth in place. I'm just going to um, draw out the area on the cloth that I'm going to need to put adhesive on just so I don't have to apply too much adhesive. To attach the second board, I'll use the spacer that I made earlier, and the boards have to be uh, perfectly aligned. So I'll draw a line at the bottom, put the spacer in place, draw a line around the second board so I know where to apply the adhesive. Put the spacer in place and a ruler across the bottom so that I can, that will also help align the boards. Everything well aligned and press down in place onto the cloth. The cloth ended up about a half a millimetre off the line. Uh, that's probably due to a rounding error at some point. I'm not going to worry about that too much. If I want to adjust uh, something, uh, I'll adjust the overlap with the board paper um, and uh, you will never notice that uh, small difference. Made a little guide from grey board that's 15 millimetres wide and I'm going to use that to trim the turn ends. Um, I just make a new guide after I accidentally cut into it, but this one's lasted me quite a while. Go around the book and trim all the turn ends. We're going to do mitered corners on this book. For that you need to trim off the corners. The cloth needs to extend one and a half times the board thickness away from the corner of the board. So the board is two millimeters, so you want about a three millimeter um, extension past the board. I cut corners by eye. Um, some people will use a jig, um, some people will measure it with a protractor. Um, it doesn't need to be super precise. This is a step where I feel speed uh, pays a higher dividend than being exactly 45 degrees. Apply the spine stiffener. Again, put a little bit of uh, water on the uh, upper side of the manila card that'll make it curl in towards the cloth and make it easier to um, stick down. So put the adhesive on the manila card.
Now it's time to do the turn-ins. Now bookbinders always do the head and tail before the fore edge. Try not to apl apply too much adhesive, that will minimise the squeeze out, but you do try and get the adhesive into the top of the boards. Um, use a bone folder to turn the uh, cloth over crisply and get a nice sharp fold at the top of the head and the tail. At the corners, use the bone folder or your thumbnail to push the little tab of cloth down into the, um, into the edge of the board. And when you turn over the fore edge, uh, that'll make a really neat, strong corner.
if you have a press, uh, a quick nip uh, of the of the uh, case will make the uh, cloth nice and flat. We'll take out any little bumps. Now we're going to put the board paper on. Now the board paper overlaps the cloth by three millimeters. So I set three millimeters on my dividers and go around and mark that on the cloth so I know where the paper will go to. So I changed my mind about the paper design. I decided to go with this uh, quite nice hand marbled paper. Line it up with the prick marks and then put a, uh, a pencil mark um, on the marble paper so it's easy to get back to that position later. Make sure that the uh, marble pattern is combed down. That's the traditional way to use marble paper. Holding the paper carefully in place, you don't want it to move, roll the corners over and crease it so that they're aligned with the prick marks on the corner. Just put a mark on the paper so you don't get the front and the back mixed up. Complete the folds at the corners and trim off the excess.
before applying the adhesive, put the paper in place and just crease along the edge of the boards and that way you know where to put the adhesive to and you won't uh, uh, over apply adhesive. All the steps in making the case use a mix of PVA and paste. Just uh, put the adhesive on where it's going to adhere to the boards and then pitch it to the prick marks. The wet paper will be fragile, so make sure you do your smoothing down under some rubbing down paper. Trim the turn ends to 15 millimeters, and then uh, glue them and turn them in. Uh, the order isn't important in this case because none of them are overlapping. Once you've got the turn ends done, just flip the case over and run the bone folder down the uh, edge of the boards on the spine cloth. Now just uh, define the uh, shoulders and that's the case done. <laughs>